Hello and welcome to the next tutorial series in the Game Guru tutorial series season 2. Today I just want to look at waypoints. Um, it's been asked about in the past and today I'll be getting to it. Um, there's a few things to know about waypoints. I'm going to cover them now um, in greater detail. The first thing is when using waypoints it is better to use the top down view. So you pitch G, you click flip, flip to top down view now this makes it a lot easier laying down waypoints and creating them. The second thing you have to know is there's a mode. You've heard of texture mode, sorry, you've heard of terrain mode and entity mode. If you go up here to the top menu bar you can see waypoint editing mode. If you click that or hit P you'll no longer be able to interact with any entities in your scene. You can only interact with um, uh, the kind of the waypoint style objects which are kind of on a different level to the entities and the terrain. Now, this button here, this kind of a teardrop, says create new waypoint. If you click that once, you'll see a small star appear in your scene. This is a node of a waypoint. And you can place it anywhere you like. I will place it at the start of this hut here. Now, to use waypoints, it's mostly keyboard. If you hold down the shift key and click on a waypoint, you'll create a second waypoint next to the first. You can then left click and drag that anywhere you like, and you can see connecting these two nodes is a semi transparent strip of um, color. Similarly, hold down shift and click next to the waypoint, it makes a second one. Do it over here, it makes a second one. Now, if you move these waypoints, you can see the strip forming in between your clicks. Hold down shift, left click, another star appears. And so you can use this to create a path. Now, this is the path that the entities will follow diligently until something calls them away from the path. Um, hence the name waypoints. It's the way that they walk or the way that they go until they receive better instruction. So now I want the waypoint to start at the foot of this great house, go over to the flowers, go over to the barrels, maybe have a look in the warehouse, then go over to the um, the yes, the um, the cart shed, and then back, no, then to the path. So we'll um, into the path, and then go back and start that again. So that is a waypoint. Now let's say you made a mistake and you created a node there and it's like oh I don't want this node here. This is totally in the way. If you hold down shift and right mouse button you will delete the waypoint that your mouse pointer is currently over. Be careful if you right click if you hold down shift and right click on the main node, the big one, you will delete the entire chain. And by that I mean if you had a node here and you created a waypoint, created a waypoint, created a waypoint, created a waypoint to think, oh, I don't want it to do this one. Hold down shift, wrap mouse button on the big one. It all goes. So you want to be careful about that. It's a good way to get rid of something if you don't want it. It's a good way to irritate yourself if you did want it. Um, so once you've got your waypoint laid out, give it a little save. And then we're going to introduce characters into the scene. Now, characters are provided with uh, scripts already in existence, and the scripts will allow the characters to automatically follow the waypoint. This is as easy as pi to achieve. If you go to add new entity, and you find a suitable character, and in my case, I'm going to go to the, um, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the characters. Yeah, the characters folder. Select fantasy. And there's a peasant in here somewhere. Now, drunk one unarmed, drunk two unarmed. So I'm going to collect drunk two unarmed. Bring him into the scene. Now, if I placed him here, he would do very little. He would, I think, charge at you if you get close to him. But he would just stand there for the rest of the time. If you extract him and place him on top of a waypoint, on top of a node, and save... When the game starts, he will recognize he's been placed on a waypoint and start following that path until his script gives him other instructions either to 
attack the player or perform an animation or whatever the script will tell him to do. In the absence of other instructions, he'll follow the waypoint. The beauty of this system is you don't have to manually assign him to a specific waypoint. You just, if you wanted another way chain over here, you could just pick him up and put him on that one and he'd follow that one. Very easy, very simple, very plain. If we test this game now, and you can see him in action. Um, I can't remember where the start marker is. I think it's near the castle. It is not near the castle. It's there. Now, if we walk over to our village, not too close, because I don't know if he's hostile, we can see him just walking on the spot. Now, obviously, that's not intentional. Oh, he's seen me. I guess this script, if he sees you, he'll make a beeline for you. But this is the challenge of waypoints. If you put the waypoint somewhere in somewhere where he can't traverse, like over an entity, or through impassable terrain, it won't like that. This is the job of the designer to make the waypoints as navigable as possible. And if you find you're doing this, if you're accidentally selecting rocks and trees and plants when you're trying to select a waypoint, just go to waypoint editing mode. You cannot then select the entities. So we'll, we'll move his waypoints. It looked like he was getting stuck on something. So we'll just move them like that and try again. Except this time I'll put my stat marker up here. So I can see him. But he won't get annoyed at me staring at him. So we'll test that game and see how we do. And we go into the world, and there he is, our little drunkard too. And he's just following his waypoints, he's doing his thing, getting on with his life, having a good time. And just walking around. So, if you had several, in fact, instead of saying it, I'll do it. If you had several waypoints in that village, now notice, if you will, another good thing I can show you here, drop down a waypoint. And let's say from the to the and maybe again to the it's green okay you see it's green uh, and if we did it again oh, can't find my point. there it is I didn't click it if we put that to there and then put this one over here, it's purple. So these are different waypoints. So if we took our um, drunkard and we put one over here and one over here and even one over here on the same waypath and then test again. Oh, come off my cursor, you. Delete you. And then test the game, you'll see that the the enemies will follow the way path that they have been assigned. And so instead of them all following the exact same path that good little drones, they will follow their own path they've been assigned. For example, this guy over here, that guy over there by the box, and this guy over here, they're all it looks like they're milling about. Now if you put a bit more time than I did into creating your waypoints. And maybe a bit of variance in the characters. You can have a quite a dynamic village. Of people wandering around, doing their own thing. You know, having a good time, making friends. Um, so you can see there's a an active little village here. You know, glance from a distance. It's like, oh, look, a village. Um, so, yeah, those waypoints. And that's how to get characters to follow waypoints. Very simple, very easy, very powerful. Um, it was a short one today. But next week... I'm going to expand this by creating another camp over here for the goblins um, to be continued.